is organic food better? I know you've heard the marketing about this. Organic food is healthier, it's better for the environment, and it's more nutritious. This is marketing hype that comes from companies and pro-organic groups. But is it really true? What is the science behind organic food? Well, to start with, we have to define organic food, and it's more complicated than you think. You might be growing things in the backyard, and you're not using chemicals. You're using organic fertilizers like compost and manure, and you think you're organic. Well, you're not. When we talk about organic food, what we're really talking about is certified organic food. This means that the grower has been approved and certified and they now follow the organic manual for growing things. What that means is that none of the backyard gardeners are organic and the food they produce is not organic. The actual definition of certified organic food is a bit complex, but it can be boiled down to one main thing. There's no use of synthetic chemical. They're only allowed to use organic chemicals, both for spraying for pests and for fertilizing their crops. Now, the odd thing is that they are allowed to use chemicals, and from my perspective, some of these are manufactured. For example, one of these is copper sulfate. It is an approved chemical for certified organic gardening, but the way it's made sounds like it's manufactured. It actually is manufactured. You take recycled copper metal, you take some sulfur, you go through a number of different processes and you create copper sulfate. And then you have to purify that to produce the final product. Now, you and I would consider that manufacturing and it takes place in a big factory. But for some reason, the organic certification people consider this organic and natural. Let's have a closer look at the claims for organic food. Is organic food better? I'll examine organic food using a number of different criteria. Does it taste better? Is it more nutritious? Is it healthier? Is it better for the environment? What about GMOs? Each of these topics has been reviewed by many reliable authorities, and so I won't be going into detail on them. My goal is to summarize what we know about organic food today. Does organic food taste better? There have been numerous studies on this, and many people, including food experts like chefs and nutritional experts, think organic food tastes better because it is grown more naturally. They believe that the organic treatment of soil transfers extra flavor into the food. The reality is that most studies report no consistent or significant differences in taste. Synthetic fertilizer does not produce better tasting food than organic fertilizer. Synthetic did produce a higher yield. Cornell University offered pairs of food to volunteers who were told one was organic and the other was not. In reality, both were identical and organic. Most volunteers rated the organic choice as better tasting than the one labeled non-organic. Organic marketing has promoted this halo effect, and many consumers now believe it, but belief is not truth. Do pesticides affect taste? A study tested 28 herbicides on a variety of crops and found 11 reduced the flavor and 2 produced a slight off taste. The rest had no effect on taste. The taste test was done by professional tasters, and the effects were minimal. The researchers felt that a consumer panel is unlikely to detect a difference. Taste has much more to do with freshness, ripeness, and cultivar selection than with how it is grown. Is organic food more nutritious? Organic food is grown with compost and manure, which add important ingredients to soil that synthetic fertilizers just can't match. Organic builds a healthy soil system full of microbes and fungi, all helping food to become more nutritious, or so the story goes. But is any of this true? Is the resulting food more nutritious? In 2012, 
Stanford Center for Health Policy did a very comprehensive meta-analysis of existing studies comparing organic and conventional foods. They did not find strong evidence that organic foods are more nutritious than conventional alternatives. Vitamin content was not higher. Phosphorus was significantly higher in organic food, but few people have a phosphorus deficiency. This has little clinical significance. Protein and fat contents were the same in both organic and conventional milk. A few studies did show a higher level of omega-3 fatty acid. One thing is clear. Fresh food is more nutritious than food that has sat around for a while, and this may be a bigger factor than how it is grown. Is organic food healthier? A major concern of conventional food is the exposure to synthetic chemicals, including fertilizers, pesticides, and medication given to farm animals. There are very few studies that have actually looked at overall health and compared people eating mostly organic to those eating mostly conventional. What about synthetic fertilizer? A lack of chemistry knowledge leads people to think that synthetic fertilizers are somehow inferior to organic fertilizers like manure and compost, but there is no scientific basis for this. Both types of fertilizer must release nutrients in plant available forms before plants can use them. Once in this form, both sources are identical as far as nutrients go. Neither one produces healthier food than the other. Let's look at pesticides. A very common belief is that organic food is grown without pesticides. That is completely false. Organic certified farmers can and do use a list of approved pesticides like copper sulfate and pyrethrin. What many consumers do not understand is that these organic pesticides can be more toxic than many of today's synthetic pesticides. Not only that, but the organic ones are less effective, which means they are applied more frequently and at higher doses. The dose makes the poison. Certified organic farmers are allowed to use copper sulfate, which has caused liver disease in farm workers, and they can use pyrethrin, which increases the risk of leukemia. The other important fact is that plants produce a vast number of natural pesticides, that is, how they keep bugs from eating them. When you eat fruit or vegetables, 99.99% of the pesticides you consume are natural pesticides, and these are the same in both types of food. The remaining 0.01% are man-made. Solanine is one of these natural pesticides. Potatoes produce it when they go green, and even small amounts can make you sick. It is true that conventional fruits and vegetables have a higher amount of synthetic pesticides on them, but the amounts are extremely small and well below any safety limits. Today's tests are so sensitive that they can find almost any chemical anywhere, but that means nothing about health issues. What about medication? Organically grown animals can't be given antibiotics or growth hormones, and their feed can't be exposed to pesticides, growth hormones, or synthetic fertilizers. Chickens and turkeys can be given antibiotics in the hatchery and on their first day of life. In Canada, organic dairy farmers are also permitted to give antibiotics when it's medically necessary, and natural treatments don't work. Organic Alberta a group educating consumers about organic food said, the long-term effects on human health of trace amounts of antibiotics in food have been difficult to determine. Translation, there is no evidence of a problem. Contrary to what you may think, the chances of you actually consuming antibiotics through animal foods is extremely low. The US, Canada, Australia, and the European Union have strict laws that prevent contaminated meat from entering the food chain. If an animal is given an antibiotic, it must go through a drug withdrawal period before it can be sold as food. Testing by the USDA in 2010 found less than 0.8% of animal food products to be positive for some form of contamination, including antibiotic residue. 
and these were removed from the food chain. Even if there is some exposure to antibiotics, there is no evidence that they cause any health issues. The overuse of antibiotics in both animals and humans is a significant concern because it can lead to resistant strains of bacteria. Is organic better for the environment? Organic food does not taste better and it is not healthier for you, but surely it is a more sustainable way to grow food. The organic food industry has done a good job of convincing you of this. And they even produce reports showing you how bad conventional agriculture is for the environment. The problem with many of these reports is that they don't look at the big picture. Sure, a single small farm may be sustainable, provided you don't count the manure that comes from another farm, or the impact of trying to grow food for a large population from this one farm. But when you look at the big picture, it is not so rosy. A single organic farm uses less electrical energy and produces fewer greenhouse gases. The problem is that organic farms are much less productive because they don't use synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. In order for an organic farm to produce the same amount as a conventional farm, it needs to use much more land. Producing organic milk requires 59% more land, organic meat, 82% more land, and organic grains require 200% more land. More land for agriculture means converting natural lands to farms, which impacts native plants and animals, and produces more CO2. If an organic certified farmer has a choice between doing something that is better for the environment or following strict certification rules, they have to follow the rules. For example, some of the modern pesticides are more effective, require lower application rates, are safer than organic options, and cause less harm to the environment. A certified farmer is still not allowed to use them, even though they are the most sustainable option. Synthetic fertilizer can grow better animal feed on a smaller area of land, but organic farms can't feed it to their cows. Organic certification is not always a good choice for the environment. Are organic animals healthier? You might think that animals on organic farms are healthier than regular farms. They eat organic food, have fewer medications, and are allowed to roam at will. A five-year U.S. study of dairy farms showed that the health of animals is the same on conventional and organic farms. A Norwegian Scientific Committee for Food Safety reached a similar conclusion when it reported no difference in disease occurrence. Pigs and poultry have better access to open areas on organic farms, but this freedom also increases their exposure to parasites, pathogens, and predators. J.C. Reese, senior fellow at the think tank Sentience Politics, said, In my view, the bigger downside to organic meat is the harm it does to animals. What about GMOs? Certified organic food in the U.S. and Canada does not contain GMOs. The European Union prohibits farmers from growing GMOs. This is a big deal to some consumers but the facts do not support their concern. First of all, most fruits and vegetables are not available in a GMO form, and GMO-produced food is mostly used in the manufacturing of processed foods. So the majority of fresh food from conventional sources is also non-GMO. Secondly, scientists are in almost universal agreement that GMO food poses no health risks. If you want to know more about this, see my article called GMO Myths, Understanding the Truth About GMO Plants. The fear of GMOs is a poor reason to buy organic food. I don't see much value in buying organic food, and to be honest with you, I've never bought any, at least not on purpose. However, there is one thing that you should consider, and that is buying your food from local farmers, provided you get to know these local farmers and you learn about their gardening habits. They don't have to be certified. They just have to use organic techniques and use techniques that are good for the environment.
If a local farmer does that, I consider their produce organic. Not certified organic, but it's organic. In fact, the food I grow in my backyard is more organic than what the certified organic farmers produce, at least in my opinion. Now, there is a problem with this approach. Many of you will go down to the local market and buy your produce there, thinking, well, I'm supporting the local farmers, and they're probably growing things organically. The problem is a lot of the produce we now find in local markets is not grown locally. It's brought in. We have no idea where that food is made, and a lot of times the people selling it are not the people growing. So if you want to support these local farmers, you have to start talking to them. Where did you get that food? Did you grow it yourself? How did you grow it? What kind of pesticides did you use? Only then do you know that it's locally grown food. Is organic food worth the money? Not in my opinion. It doesn't taste better. It's not more nutritious. And it's not grown in a way that is better for the environment. The only real benefit for buying certified organic food is that you're supporting the organic movement. And more and more that organic movement is being done by large international corporations. It's not the local farmer. Here's an idea that's much better than buying certified organic food. Take the extra money that you've saved, buy a tree, and plant it. Even if you fertilize it with synthetic fertilizer, you are being much nicer to the environment than by buying certified organic food. Now, if you'd like to learn more about GMO and the safety of GMO food, have a look at this video here. And if you want to grow nutritious food, don't skip this video. Happy gardening.